Hi, my name is Dwayne Perkins, and today we'll be discussing high-volume data processing. This is a software engineering challenge faced every day by software companies in various industries. For example, an e-commerce company that must process thousands of financial transactions every minute, or a cybersecurity firm that must analyze financial transactions for potential fraud or a biometrics firm that must compare a fingerprint, iris scan, or a picture of a face against millions of cataloged identities. For this presentation, we will focus on one problem statement in order to apply software engineering principles to a specific problem. The company you work for is contracted to process and track all aircraft in flight around the world showing their current locations on a map, detecting collision risks, and storing the data for historical analysis. There are thousands of aircraft in flight at any time, and many sources of information about those aircraft, such as radar sweeps from short or long distance radar, self-reporting transponder systems, and even infrared sensor reports from satellites. In order to abstract ourselves from the many details that we don't have time to address, let us assume that we are receiving more data than we can reasonably process with one high-end system using serial or single-threaded processing. Stop and think. Can you think of a specific software engineering principle we can apply to solve this problem? Let's talk about Let's modularity. modularity. We can start by can separating, start by the, separating software the software into components, components according to functionality and responsibility. It would be, it would be inefficient for the same process to perform all of the tasks. Of the tasks. For, example, for example, data storage can be data time-consuming. Time time consuming. Since this feature is, this not, feature time is not time we sensitive, don't want other we don't want our features that are time sensitive, such as, such as plotting to a map detecting or detecting collisions, to be impacted by the latency of disk I.O. By breaking the process up into separate components, we can handle components each separately. Components can be run in parallel, components can be run in parallel on different threads, threads or even on different servers. We can tailor the allocation of resources, to each, to, each allocation of resources to each component within the overall system. A system is considered scalable if it doesn't need to be redesigned to maintain effective performance during or after a steep increase in workload. Scalability can be supported by dynamically allocating hardware based on the current workload, for example, memory, CPU cores, or physical servers. Container managers can allocate additional resources to a container or create additional containers if necessary. Thread pool management is another form of scalability. Within a Java process, additional threads can be created for parallel processing. A thread pool can automate this process. Program specifies a configuration such as initial number of threads and maximum number of threads that can be allocated. Remember that at some point allocating additional threads will not improve performance because there is a physical limit of processing power based on the number of physical cores in your system. In order to save off all of the flight data we receive, it may be necessary to spin up several servers specifically dedicated to this endeavor. It is not a time-sensitive task, however, so the amount of resources dedicated to this can be altered based on the needs of other modules. Another concept to discuss is priority processing. In most systems, not all data is equally important. In our problem solution, Modules that detect to prevent in-flight collisions process data that is more time-sensitive and more important than modules that store historical data. Those modules can be assigned additional resources based on the criticality of the feature. Even within a process, some data can be given higher priority than other data. Consider using a priority queue. Priority queue is a queue where items are read from the queue in a specific order, as shown in the diagram. The highest priority items are read first, 
If you are using threads, be sure to use a priority blocking queue, which is thread safe. Downsampling is another process of reducing the sampling rate of a signal. I think of it more as a controlled loss of data. Types of downsampling include filtering. If there is any way to filter out unimportant data, we should do so before performing any intensive processing. We can use geographic filters to help with collision detection by only considering nearby aircraft and their flight paths. We can also eliminate all planes on the ground, except under very specific circumstances, such as when planes are landing at an airport. Duplicate elimination. We can identify duplicate reports and elim eliminate those duplicates rather than processing them all. Linear sampling. This is a sampling algorithm where you ignore some percentage of the data. If each specific data item is not critically important, then taking a random sampling of the overall data can still convey a fairly accurate overall picture. This method, in its extreme, is used in polling numbers. Aging. We can replace older, unprocessed data reports with newer reports on the same object. This requires a unique ID for correlating new updates to existing objects in your collection. Stop and think. Which approach would you choose to downsample the data for plotting of the current location and for collision detection? There may be many good approaches, but one that we will look at further is aging. We can downsample older reports that we didn't have time to process using a unique linking block queue. This collection type does not exist in Java libraries. The collection combines a linked blocking queue with a hash map. A linked blocking queue ensures that data is processed in the same order it came in, or FIFO. The hash map ensures that there is only the most recent data report for each unique item in the collection. Therefore, regardless of how many positional reports we receive, the number of objects in the collection cannot exceed the total number of aircraft in flight at any one time. On the slide, we see a visual depiction of receiving an update message on a track with an ID of 005. We also see the before and after conditions of the unique linked blocking queue. Notice that after the track update is stored, the position of the queue of track 005 remains the same. So receiving rapid updates on this track will, affect, will not affect the order in which all tracks are processed. The new message for track 005 replaces the original message for that track so the older positional information will be overwritten with the current location. Don't assume that Java libraries always contain the type of container that best meets your needs. Choose the solution which best solves the problem rather than ramming the problem through existing solutions that are inefficient. Downsampling is another way that we can deal with high volume data throughput. Plotting data to a map can be very memory and processor intensive, especially if you are trying to display a great deal of data, such as the requirement for our problem. We have to display thousands of aircraft that are constantly moving. There are some techniques that can be used to help downsample the data and increase performance. Heat maps combine visual data when the distinct display of each object would be too crowded to make any sense at your current zoom level on the map. The colors used in the map reflect a generalization of the combined data. For example, on a weather map, colors are used to show temperature readings or precipitation levels. On a command and control system, colors may detect friendly versus hostile units at a high level when using heat maps. You can't see every unit, but you can get a general idea of where the friendly units and hostile units are positioned. Clustering is similar to heat maps, but rather than creating blobs of colored areas, clustering rolls up a number of objects into one larger object, 
This could be based on location information, hierarchical order, or some other attribute. Oftentimes, the number of items that were combined is displayed on the larger symbol so that you are aware of how many items were combined. Averaging. This technique is effective for reducing the storage size of images. For example, you can break an entire picture up into groups of four pixels and average the color values in that grouping. When finished, the picture may lose some resolution, but in most cases the performance savings is a worthwhile trade-off. If you look at historical data in Google Maps, you may notice that the lines depicting your movements do not always follow the roads exactly. This is not caused by GPS inaccuracy since in real time, the same application correctly displays your location on the road. In order to reduce the storage size of historical data, Google is using some kind of downsampling algorithm on the data. It is probably an averaging algorithm. In summary, we have looked at several ways to handle high volume data throughput in this presentation. Modularity, or dividing software into smaller modules. Scalability, the ability to change the size of the system without changing the code. Priority processing, focusing on the most important or the time sensitive data first. Downsampling, the controlled reduction of data. There are many other approaches and software engineering principles that we did not have time to cover in this presentation. So I encourage you to further consider the problem of how to handle high volume data throughput and research techniques that could be used to provide an optimal solution. Thank you.